Okay, so in the first talk, we have the Transact Impact Webinar, that is a Transact Reference Architecture, a universally applica applicable distributed solution architecture concept. That will be presented by Javier Coronel Parada from Instituto Tecnologico de Informatica. Javier is a technical coordinator of the, C the Cyber Physical System in the research group and the Instituto Tecnologico de Informatica. Uh, in this background, we can find a PhD in automation and industrial computer science with a specialization in embedded real-time software development, safety critical system and virtualization technology for embedded environments. Then we will have Thune Hendricks from Netherlands Organization for Applied Research, uh, Applied Scientific Research. Theon Hendricks uh, is a system architect and senior research fellow in this organization, and he has an educational background in aerospace technology. He worked as an architect in various high tech companies before he joined this Netherlands organization for applied research, uh, for applied scientific research. Now, within the European Transact project, he studied methods to ensure services continuity when connecting safety critical system to the cloud. The, this presentation will focus on the Transact reference architecture and it is and this its distributed multi-tier approach, which is based on a computing continuum that spans from the cyber physical system device tier through the age tier to the to the cloud tier. Okay, I will uh, give the floor to the first speaker. Okay, thank you, Rosario, for the introduction. I'm going to share my, my screen. We can see your slide. Perfect. Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm Javier Coronel from ITI. And I will present the Transact Reference Architecture with my partner, Theon Hendricks from TNO, from Netherlands. Uh, this reference architecture is a result of the European project, Transat. Uh, this work is developed in the context of the cyber physical system, which, uh, as maybe you know, uh, the CPS integrate computation and physical process uh, processes interacting with the real world with different uh, needs and restrictions. And more specifically, uh, this work is focused on the safety critical CPS, which require compliance with certification and qualifications uh, standards. And this um, often means fulfilling safety, performance, and security and privacy uh, requirements. Uh, so due to this, this restriction, this type of system are a real challenge. And for this reason, uh, nowadays, many safety critical uh, CPS are still deployed as a standalone system in isolated uh, way to ensure these restrictions. But uh, it results in unlimited flexibility and scalability and often uh, with limited uh, computing resources. Uh, however, the, the rapid innovation uh, in the incorporation of AI, artificial intelligence driving functionalities, uh, for example, in high test uh, system, make uh, these systems demand more and more uh, powerful computing, uh, computation resources, which are unavail unavailable in the classical uh, safety critical system. Uh, this is why we create the Transat project to overcome, uh, overcome these limitations. Uh, the Transat project uh, investigate the, the way to transform safety critical CPS from a standalone system into safe and secure distributed solution, leveraging the uh, age and cloud power computing. Uh, to start uh, with this transformation, uh, we define an universally applicable distributed solution architecture concept so as to allow its application in different uh, industrial domains. 
Uh, this presentation focuses on the definition of the Transat reference architecture, whose objective is to guide and help the designer and developer of safety critical system to build application on distributed uh, in a distributed way. Uh, we are based uh, on the distributed computing continuum paradigm, uh, also known as cloud age uh, and device or, uh, continuum or cloud age IoT uh, continuum. But we are going to apply this paradigm uh, to safety critical systems. Uh, in this paradigm, the cloud uh, and age uh, tiers have two fold purpose, both outsourcing and extending the device functionalities, uh, leveraging the additional available computing resources in the age and cloud tier. Uh, outsourcing functionality can lead to improve uh, performance, reduce execution times, or enhance the precision and computation, uh, as long as the quality of services requirements are met and safety, security is not compromised. Uh, to accomplish uh, this feature uh, required by the distributed safety critical system, the transfer reference architecture defines and subset um, uh, of components and functions across the three tiers, the device, ACE, uh, and cloud. And each tier provides an, a specific quality of service level, especially with respect to the performance aspect, uh, such as response times, data transfer guarantees, and time determinacy data transfers, and so on. And security aspect, we are uh, very important, uh, as you know, in the safety critical systems. Uh, the reference architecture defined and subset of core uh, core transat components uh, ingrained in the in the picture, uh, which are focused on ensuring safety, performance, security, and privacy uh, of the application requirement of the application uh, application the, the payload the, of the system. The blue uh, component refer to optional uh, value added uh, functions. And safety, uh, safety and mission critical function and not critical uh, function are domain specific. Uh, sorry, domain specific um, function or, or components, uh, which are in red, uh, yellow, and green, depending on the the criticality, and can be offloaded from the device to the other uh, uh, tier. Okay, the idea is to improve the existing uh, CPS by first uh, stripping the device of the function. There are no safety uh, or mission critical and can be executing remotely in, in other uh, in, progress. in the other um, years. Mm. And second, is of loading certain safety critical functions to the uh, from the device to the edge tier. Mm, the device tier and the cloud uh, are connected through the edge tier, and they are uh, connected uh, via a reliable network uh, with um, ne uh, network with. Uh, Deterministic network, sorry. Um, whereas the ACE and cloud are connected with BSS for um, a network and it's connect and these tier are connected to internet. Uh, these components and functions and this tier are the result, uh, the collecting technical uh, requirement, functional and non-functional requirement from uh, five different uh, use cases. Uh, from the different industrial uh, domains, uh, from the automotive, uh, maritime sector, uh, medical sector, uh, was water um, sector. And uh, additionally, uh, this is the result of analysis and subset of relevant 
safety and security uh, concepts and solutions in the development of or relevant in, in the development of the safety critical system. And these solutions, uh, we can find solutions to predictable performance, health monitoring, risk analysis, and safety and security assurance, security communications, um, data communication security, and so on. So these solutions uh, and requirements from the use cases were mapped uh, or trusted to age uh, architectural uh, component in order to guarantee the universal applicability of the, of the proposal. Uh, the definition of uh, the reference architecture is complemented with, by an static and dynamic views. The static view uh, provides the model of the three tiers, uh, including the role functionalities of each component, their configuration and interface, and the relationship uh, between components. Um, the actual implementation of uh, safety and performance or security aspects in the architecture is an application specific of the designer and developers. Uh, to this end, our architecture will suggest a specialized set of components for each aspect. Uh, for example, for safety uh, assurance concept of application, we'll typically em uh, will employ uh, the components related to the safety performance, uh, operational uh, mode coordinator, uh, operational mode coordinator, uh, operational mode manager, uh, at the respective uh, tiers. Uh, these core components are envisioned to realize uh, the subjective cooperatively or coordinately between all the components. Uh, this is another uh, example for the security assurance concept. So here uh, typically we'll use uh, the designer, uh, we'll use the Companies related with, uh, related with the auditing services, access privacy, uh, unidentified services, and security monitoring services. And when we have an artificial intelligence functionality, for example, in the application, it will probably employ the, the component related to the uh, AI and machine learning and analytics uh, components. Uh, will employ the big data as a service uh, components and the data manager in the difference in the respective uh, tier. Uh, this is an example of the, um, the model template collected for each components in the reference architecture. Uh, we collect, uh, uh, sorry, we define the role and functionality for each component. Uh, define the configuration, the manda mandatory part and the optional part, the input uh, and output uh, interf uh, interfaces, the endpoints, uh, uh, the endpoints required, the requirements and concepts related or that cover that component and the relationship with the other components. The dynamic, the, the sorry, uh, regarding to the dynamic view, uh, this view provides the insight into how the different components this view represents the behavior uh, behavior of the components in the device age and uh, cloud continuum to ensure uh, the system oper oper Opera uh, as expected. Uh, we have defined six functional capabilities um, in order to facilitate the understanding of the transfer reference architecture. Health monitoring, performance management, uh, chain operational mode, remote update, um, access control, and end-to-end -end, uh, end -end secure communication. Mm, for each capability, we have uh, defined a workflow and a scenario. The workflow 
uh, describe and solution to the users, uh, the, the needs of the user, and defines the methods and steps to achieve the capability. And regarding to scenarios, uh, the, the scenario illustrate and concrete uses use of the workflow. Uh, and a scenario describe and concrete history in particular uh, context with the framework of a specific problem. Okay, uh, this is an example of a um, workflow. In this case, it's an example for the chain operational mode. Here you can see uh, a global chain uh, operational mode uh, rises from the cloud. Uh, in this case, due to um, an event. And here you can see the different steps required to implement uh, this uh, capability. And in this workflow, we, uh, we identify the uh, different uh, architectural uh, components uh, that uh, they are involved in the, uh, in the capability, in the implementation of the capability. So here the request of the a global chain operational mode is um, propagate to the different to, to the other uh, tiers. Um, uh, in each tier, this uh, request is performed, uh, and this has a result and local uh, chain operational mode, for example, in the device tier. And um, when the global uh, uh, chain operational mode is completed. Uh, we can perform the global uh, the global chain mode. Okay, uh, this is an example of a specific scenario related with this workflow for this workflow. In this case, this scenario is a chain of operational mode to enable cloud uh, supervision. So uh, here we uh, we provide more details about this implementation uh, and the different steps and the uh, different uh, architectural components involved in this in this process. Okay, so uh, our proposal, uh, the reference architecture, inspired uh, the design of the industrial use cases in our project. Demonstrating or try to to demonstrate the universal applicability of the proposal. Uh, in the project, we have um, an autonomous uh, vehicle in urban public uh, transport. Uh, we have a maritime, um, maritime use case, and um, battery management uh, in electric vehicles, um, safe and efficient wastewater recycling use case. And finally, a medical use case related with the clinical application platform for image guided uh, therapy. Uh, for more uh, comprehensive understanding, we are going to show uh, how the transit approach and the reference architecture, uh, architecture can be applied in a concrete scenario of this use case. So here, my partner, Teun, will present this. Yeah, thank you, Javier, uh, for your introduction of the uh, reference architecture. Uh, so I'm Teun Hendricks. I'm working at, uh, at Tino in the Netherlands. And um, we work together with Philips and uh, examine a, a medical use case, uh, cloud assistance to improve image-guided uh, surgery. Now. These systems, uh, these image guided surgery systems, uh, as you see on the picture left, uh, these are safety critical systems. You can't see it, but somewhere on this table is a patient lying, uh, which is being operated. Uh, the surgeon uh, is not looking at the patient, but rather at the screen. And uh, these systems allow minimally invasive surgery. That means that uh, if there's some uh, blood related or vessel related uh, issue, then uh, the surgeon can, by means of a catheter that is inserted in the in the groin of the patient, so, so the higher thigh, reach the area in the vessel, uh, perhaps near the heart, 
where there is a clogging or there is uh, some, some uh, widening of vessels and place there a, a stent or another uh, stuff to ensure that the uh, medical uh, treatment can work and that the, the, the blood can flow freely through the veins. For that, um, this, this arch, uh, uh, there is an X-ray emitter and a sensor that the, the surgeon has live X-ray. And by that, um, this, uh, this procedure is being executed. Now, uh, these systems were connected to the cloud, uh, but only for patient information after the operation. What is happening now, that is in this project, we're looking how to connect these systems to the cloud while during the operation, uh, while performing the operation. And for instance, there can be reasons like it's a, sometimes a difficult uh, procedure or a difficult situation. And rather than only having the 2D view, you may want to have a 3D scan to better examine whether the procedure goes right. And that may happen a, a number of times during a uh, operation of 30, 40 minutes. So what happens then is that um, the surgeon uh, issues such a request, this arch, uh, they, they um, will make a rotation around the patient, collects about uh, between 200 and 600 images, and these have to then be collated and, and uh, reconstructed, uh, made a 3D model that the surgeon then can examine, um, examine uh, in the operation. So what happens is the surgeon prepares such, an, uh, such a scan. Uh, they get out of the room because then there's high dose X-ray on the patient. And these images are shipped off to the cloud. Um, they are being processed. Let me see. Yeah. And after a while, this 3D reconstruction is put back and up. Uh, and is shown on the screen of the uh, of the surgeon that can examine this and um, and plan the remainder of the re operation based on the 3D reconstruction. So this all happens while the patient is on the table, while the catheter is inside the patient. So it's uh, it should function. Um, the response time should be low, such that uh, the surgeon can proceed with the um, with the operation and also the amount of X-ray dose to the patient is limited eh? because even eh, there's always a continuous X-ray low, low, uh, low dose to ensure that there's a live image there. Now, could you do not do that in the hospital, this type of procedure? Yes, you could, but imagine that these systems are very expensive. They have a long lifetime, eh? 15, 20 years. That means also the compute equipment in the hospital may be from 10 years ago. That doesn't have the latest CPUs, GPUs to perform high, uh, high precision uh, rec reconstruction algorithms. So it's very beneficial to do these types of algorithms to offer them in the cloud such that the surgeons have access to the latest algorithms and also can exploit the latest computing hardware in the cloud. Uh, and also, um, these systems are safety critical. So anytime you do an update of the uh, system in the hospital, you have to go through a new certification, uh, ver verification, validation, cert certification screen uh, process. So that's slow and time consuming and expensive. And not all hospitals are, are ready for that. Um, and so there is a definite case for trying to offload some of the non-safety critical, uh, but mission critical functions like 3D reconstructions to the cloud, basically to give surgeon access to the latest uh, medical imaging uh, improvements. However, uh, the cloud is not always available uh, and that can be for various reasons. So uh, that can be because of in certain locations, the uh, internet is not always stable. Um, there can be uh, power outages uh, where the hospital has emergency power, but uh, the general hospital facilities IT may not. Uh, there can be uh, denial of service attacks on hospital equipment or various reasons. So 
you cannot rely on the internet and the cloud being always available for such mission critical applications. So here is how we then apply the, uh, the reference architecture and also figure out the scenarios in which you can apply the reference architecture. Now we have uh, uh, drawn it here from, uh, from the input data to the, uh, to the output data. And what we have done is uh, in the, in the uh, reference architecture on device, we have the safety critical function. Uh, and in this case, that is the live X-ray video uh, that uh, must always be there. Otherwise, uh, the surgeon cannot understand what, uh, what he or she is doing. But then for the, uh, the mission critical functionality, uh, this 3D reconstruction, uh, in principle, you want to do that in the cloud to have access to the latest and, and greatest algorithms and the most precise. Uh, but what if that cloud is not available or not accessible? So in this case, uh, you still want to treat the patient, uh, give them a safe treatment. So for that, we have a fallback option. Uh, let's call it a classic 3D reconstruction. It's not the latest and greatest, uh, but it provides the surgeon with uh, enough information to to decide whether to safely continue the operation or whether to safely uh, abort the operation and bring the patient back in a stable state. Now, the trick is, so how do you decide, what do you monitor and how do you decide whether you can use this latest 3D reconstruction or this classic reconstruction? Uh, for that, you have you need the, uh, the, uh, the monitoring and safety and security services and also switch the operational mode. And this is one of the, uh, the research items we, we did, how to apply this reference architecture and in which cases to switch and how to switch. So let me show you two scenarios also from the um, uh, reference architecture work. And this one scenario is where we look at um, the device edge where the, uh, the, the, the mission critical head fallback is, is or organized and the cloud. And the uh, safety and performance security monitoring service are in, in the, the monitoring and analyzing functions. So in the normal scenario, uh, you look at, okay, is the cloud available? What will be the latency? Um, I'm starting to do my scan, so I get these images. And then if uh, everything's okay, then I go to the cloud. I prepare my cloud resources. Uh, maybe I need another uh, virtual machine, um, but I'm, I'm reserving capacity. And I then execute the cloud processing and, and, and it comes back on the, uh, on the device. So this is the normal scenario, and this is also how we, uh, in this use case, can uh, apply the reference architecture and decide to put the 3D reconstruction on the, uh, on the cloud side. Now, it doesn't always go right, eh? or you cannot expect it. So this is then the fallback scenario, and this also is now how we apply the reference architecture and the dynamic behavior. In this case, yeah, we try to predict latency while also uh, scanning the patient. And then this, this monitoring gives us back that, hey, we cannot access the cloud. So uh, in that case, we use the operational mode manager to decide, let's go to the fallback uh, mechanism. So here we process the, uh, the images in the hospital lower quality and not the latest and greatest, but still enough to, um, to fall back, uh, to give the surgeon a, a, uh, a view on, um, on the 3D uh, situation inside the patient to continue the operation. So in this case, we show now how this reference architecture, we use that to ensure that a service can be continued even if there's an internet outage or some other problems with reaching or executing on the cloud. Um, for this uh, use case, we made an open source demonstrator because it's it's not very wise to do it on, uh, on on the actual machinery. So this open source demonstrator is available on Eclipse, uh, Eclipse Research Labs. So on the device, we have uh, a simple application viewer with a load balancer. 
that runs two open source stacks, open MVG, yeah, open uh, multiple view geometry and open MVS, multiple view stereo. Um, and a load balancer that decides yeah, as mode manager to whether to run it locally or globally. Um, and the open multiple view geometry that uh, matches the images and creates a point cloud. And the open multi view stereo makes from the point cloud a, a stereo view. And uh, mostly it's done on the uh, cloud cluster. So the images are stored then in an Amazon S3 bucket. And there's also lots of uh, performance measurement tools like Open Telemetry and, and Jaeger, Prometheus, and Grafana to measure performance. To show how this worked, we made a simple video. Uh, let me see where it is. This video demonstrates the loss of connection scenario for the 3D reconstruction application. The application has two clusters, device and cloud. For the demo, device cluster is running on the local machine and traffic uh, from the device cluster goes to the cloud cluster uh, through the load balancer, which acts as a operational mode manager. Load balancer can detect if the connection to the cloud cluster is lost and then route the traffic to the local MVG instance. And this is how the uh, load balancer configuration looks like. Uh, the remote service is the primary service and the local service is the backup service and it's, it switches over after three failed attempts. Let's initiate a normal reconstruction on the cloud now. So the reconstruction is now complete. To simulate loss of connection, I'll kill the Wi-Fi connection now. So it runs on the local laptop, this uh, device. Let's initiate another reconstruction now. Reconstruction is now complete, a bit less quality than the cloud reconstruction. It also showcases the names of the images that are not used during reconstruction due to image quality problems. If I start another reconstruction now, it will also show the warning that another reconstruction has started and the previous result of the reconstruction can be displayed uh, using this link. So now we can turn the connection back on. So the load balancer will uh, detect the connection and then revert the load balancer back to the uh, cloud connection. So that's all for this demo. So what this open source demonstrator shows is that uh, we can successfully deploy their reference architecture, but also uh, we need to identify under which scenarios the, uh, the operational mode manager, in this case in the load balance, should fall back to uh, to local reconstruction versus uh, using the cloud-based reconstruction. And that's uh, part of the work, how to deploy the reference architecture and also how to populate the uh, safety, security, uh, privacy, uh, performance services in order to ensure the uh, correct uh, functionality uh, when connecting safety critical systems to the cloud. So maybe now, Javier, I'll give the floor back to you for the conclusions. Okay, thank you, Jim, for the presentation. As conclusions and consideration, um, the Transar Reference Architecture uh, presented proposed and multi-tier approach that uh, liberates the age and cloud computing to enhance the flexibility, scalability, uh, and access to advanced technology, uh, technologies uh, without uh, compromise the safety performance, safety and privacy requirements important in the safety critical systems. Uh, the architecture uh, detailed uh, through a static and dynamic view, uh, the dynamic views uh, provides more insight to, to help to the designer and developers to adopt, adopt or transit approach in order to, uh, to, to build distributed applications. Uh, we can say uh, that we presented a multi-domain reference architecture uh, that can be applied in different uh, sector 
in our project, we uh, did this uh, architecture in five different industrial use cases of uh, five different uh, industrial sectors. And additionally, we presented uh, a specific scenario of a medical use case illustrating the potential benefits of the architecture and how to adopt the reference architecture using existing open source uh, technologies. Uh, we have a available um, um, report with the, all the details uh, about the transfer reference architecture. This report is available in our web page. Or I don't know if now it's available or in the next day will be uh, available to, to download, to, to check directly. Um, Finally, uh, our proposal, uh, this uh, architecture is complemented with a um, transition methodology to help in this uh, transi uh, transition from the uh, monolithic, uh, uh, from a monolithic approach and distributed approach for safety critical system. And this is the presentation of my partners, Christoph and, and Astrid. So um, this is the complete uh, consortium uh, from the different uh, with uh, companies, university of the different uh, countries. So, and this is the web page of the our project. Okay, so let me know if you have some questions for for us. Thank you, thank you for the very interesting presentation. Uh, I, I don't see question uh, or raised hand. Uh, I, I, I have one question, sorry. Uh, this is Alyosha Pasic from Eviden, Atos. Uh, did you consider uh, at uh, device level uh, isolation between critical and, and uh, normal environments? So either through uh, different virtual machines at, at uh, device level or or, or uh, trust execution environment. Um, yeah, the, I can answer that. Yeah, for medical conclusion, definitely it's there. Huh? So the uh, the critical imaging part from the X-ray sensor to the uh, display is very much isolated from. Uh, for further value added services. Um, I can't go into detail, but yes, that, that is certainly uh, the case. Uh, these, these systems in the hospital itself are quite complex and, and there is quite some, uh, some separation indeed. But that goes okay. beyond this, uh, this talk, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, depending on the scenario, uh, uh, the device could be connected only with the ACE tier to uh, isolated network with deterministic uh, network. And the access internet is only uh, uh, provided for the ACE and cloud tier, obviously. Uh, but depend of the of the industry or the, the use case. The device tier could be isolated for the internet access, for example. So in the architecture, we, we consider two, two types of, of a network, for example, the deterministic and best effort network. Yeah, I was actually referring to, to uh, uh, execution level, so the two environments. Oh, okay. like, uh... yeah, many, many of these devices uh, etched are multi uh, distributed computing systems, right? Mm. With, uh, with, the, with, with different uh, computing parts for the uh, critical imaging chains and for the uh, motion and rather for application and, and general purpose. Mm 